Welcome back to another video lecture. This time it is on AP World History and trade routes. Yes, I know, how exciting, right? Trade routes, but actually trade routes are pretty exciting. And here's why, trade really changes everything. You know, one of the biggest continuities in human history is trade. And the connections were made through these interactions. You know, for a long time, people have believed that human communities were kind of disconnected until the Industrial Revolution. That takes place in the 1700s. But we kind of know differently today. Humans have been interacting through trade relationships pretty much since the beginning of our existence. Yeah, I know. You're probably wondering why this matters. Trade relationships change everything from politics to social order to cultural mixing and environmental effects. The three biggest trade routes that come before the time period of European exploration are the Silk Road, the Indian Ocean, and the Trans-Saharan. And they did just that. They connected people and they made massive revolutionary changes within societies. So let's start off with the Silk Roads. Yeah, this is important. There is no such thing as the Silk Road. They were what were called the Silk Roads. And the reason why is because they were all these disconnected pathways that eventually got people to trade from one area to the next. This area was the largest land-based trade route. That's right. These began during the Han Chinese dynasty, so that's how far back they go. And they connected civilizations from China to India to Middle East to Africa and Europe. The Silk Roads got their name because of the farming of silk from mulberry trees in China. But this was hardly the only type of good that was farmed and then traded along these roads. Merchants traded everything from paper to porcelain to spices to nuts to ivory to it just goes on and on. Now this is the first major change I want you to think about. Let's make a differentiation between, in economics, domestic versus exotic goods. So what do I mean? By domestic goods, I mean what a group of people farm or produce within their own country. Exotic goods are products that are farmed and produced outside in other countries. Countries trade with one another because they know that they are really good at making domestic goods, but they want exotic goods from other countries. Who cares, right? Well, this relationship of shopping for exotic goods forces people out of their comfortable homelands into other regions of the world. Now we have an impetus for a cause and effect relationship. Ooh, that sounds like a historical thinking skill to me. Once people start to move, trade and interact, relationships start to change. Remember that example that I used of farming mulberry trees? Well, that was done by Chinese women. So that means that relationships are strengthening their new role and status in China, working in the public sphere. Or let's take, for example, the role of merchants. Throughout most of human history, merchants were looked down upon. They were seen as selfish. But the increase in trade in the Middle East led to a new status for merchants, who were now seen as important, necessary to the growth of societies. There was also a dramatic change to cultural interactions. As people moved with goods, people also moved with ideologies, religions, and cultures. Buddhists who moved into China interacted with merchants, and that led to new sects of Buddhism, like Mahayana and Theravada Buddhism. These arose as ways to win over the merchants. It gave them a new religious belief based upon prayer, veneration, and right behavior, not the original belief of detachment from Buddhism. There were also dramatic environmental and natural impacts. Take the spread of disease as an example. The Mongols, who conquered most of Central and East Asia, opened up a huge trade route that connected China, India, and Africa. In fact, they strengthened that trade route and protected it. But that trade also allowed for people to carry diseases from China all the way over to Europe. And that led to the Black Death, which killed pretty much half of the European population. Okay, now let's switch over to another trade route, the Indian Ocean trade route. The Indian Ocean trade route was even more massive in the area that it covered. It was a sea road that connected Africa to India to China to the Middle East. It helped to transport bulk goods of different types of crops, metals, and finished products. What do I mean by bulk goods? Well, ships could carry a lot more goods, right? Because they had huge hulls to do so. So they were able to carry a ton of goods that they could then sell at a lower price. Think of it as almost like Costco on water. That was kind of the idea at the time. It caused the interaction of people stretching from Confucian China, Hindu India, to Islamic Middle East, to the African Swahili port cities. All the while, the ships were carried by monsoon winds that would lead to a massive sharing of goods, ideas, and people. The Indian Ocean had many of the same effects as the Silk Roads, but it had a special impact upon Southeast Asia. There, trading kingdoms were formed, 
in the islands south of China. Kingdoms arose like Srivijava, Angkor Wat, and Java. The kingdoms were hierarchical and very authoritarian from within, but they were also very open to trade from without. And this led to a massive mixture of Buddhist, Islamic, Hindu, and Confucian culture. This is best seen in their monuments. For example, the Bobadur monument is a Buddhist feature that stretched like a pyramid stretching up to the skies to detach from this world. However, look at the monuments in Angkor Wat, not too far away. They represent the symbols of Hinduism and its gods. The point is that the Indian Ocean created a massive degree of cultural blending and synthesis. Okay, let's take a look at now the third major trade route, the Trans-Saharan. So the last major trade route of this era is found in the Sub-Saharan region. The Trans-Saharan trade route covered West Africa to the Middle East. The introduction of the Arabian camel, which could travel for days without water, made it possible for kings and merchants to connect Africa to the Middle East. Take, for example, Mansa Musa. Mansa Musa would spread the ideas of Islam while traveling on his Hajj to Mecca. He connected the Middle East to Western Africa, and his use of gold enriched the area, leading to incredible trade. So once again, it's the exchange of domestic and exotic goods that created an impetus for exploration. And the interaction between these different areas led to a massive mixing of people, culture, and innovations. Now there is another part that also happened along this trade route that's important to mention. Not only do we have the selling of goods and services, we have the selling of human beings as well. There was a large-scale use of human slavery on the Trans-Saharan trade route. Western Africans were transported throughout Northern Africa and the Middle East, about 5,000 per year in the slave trade. They tended to serve in positions in the military, as servants, and even government positions in many of the societies that they landed in. Okay, so we have three major trade routes throughout human history. Why should this be of any concern to you as you're studying? Well, here's three major takeaways I want you to take away on this. Number one, humans have been pushing themselves for finding exotic goods since pretty much the beginning and they use their production of domestic goods to support their local area. Number two, trade has meant that diffusion of mixing of goods, ideas with communities, but also disease is sort of a downside as well. And number three, humans have been transforming their environment for centuries, and they've been using a lot of different technologies to do this, including the use of the monsoon winds, camels, horses, and new innovative technologies like saddles. Trade is really important to human history. Trade and economics changes everything. It doesn't just trade it because of the goods and services that we exchange back and forth. It's because it does revolutionary things to hierarchies. It gives new people new places in those hierarchies, like women having public careers, making silk, merchants being seen as the engine of society. Trade and economics are really important. That's why it's so important that we study. See you in class.